friends. I have a lot of things <laughs> that I need to ask you today. The first one is, how offended are you that I don't have a lot of makeup on? Please answer below. I thought it'd be fun to do a little giveaway. So to anyone who comments below, I'm going to pick one of you and give away a little something that I'm going to show later. <laughs> but I'm so glad you're here. My name is Jenna. Welcome to my channel where I talk about anything I want that I'm loving at the present moment. Today we're going to talk about a morning basket. Is this in the shop? <laughs> this way better? I don't know. This is something that Pam Barnhill coined a phrase of the morning basket and I'm sure you've heard of it if you've been around homeschool for any amount of time. But it's something that I didn't really know all of last year. I didn't even think of it. Didn't even know about it. Maybe I'd heard of it, but it seemed like not something I was super into trying to do. But this year, I've been really trying to think about how to incorporate the girls together more with Bible and with praying together and with kind of starting our day together. I found that when we're all starting individually and starting off on our own things, which is my tendency to do is like, go take care of everything you can take care of and then we'll do our group subjects later which is very productive. It really wasn't setting the stage for what I want our family homeschool life to be like, which is a family, which is praying together and being together right at the start of our day to really give God our first fruits of our whole day, um, give each other the first fruits of our whole day to be with each other and to pray with each other. So I have been recently converted to starting a morning basket. And when I say recently, I mean, we literally just started like a week ago. So please be gentle with me. I want to know your favorite thing in your morning basket. So comment below. Tell me your favorite thing in this morning basket. Comment below. I'm giving you lots of opportunities to win something. Okay. It's very exciting. I hope that it can be inspiring to you. Not something that makes you feel weighed down or um, like another thing you have to add to your to-do list. It's not like that for me right now. And, and that's when I kind of know that it's the Lord and not my own decision of, okay, this is another thing I need to add. No, this is going right with the, the prayer and the discernment that Mike and I have been doing about just slowing down and being with our family and talking to our family about the Lord and what is most important. So in other people's morning baskets that I've seen on YouTube, watched a lot of videos, everyone just has a different way of doing their morning basket, but it's basically just a family circle time in the morning. Um, to read together, to be together, to uh, start your morning off as a family. And so that's just been really special to us. I'm loving this time together. It may change in a week, who knows? But here's what we've got going this week, and I'm excited to share. Okay, so here is my morning basket, and we'll just kind of go through what is in here and what we use every morning uh, or what we have been using it always could change as you know and i'll try to make this shorter i've done this before and it was way too long so i'm gonna try to talk faster or something who knows what i'm gonna start with is my mom binder this was actually my eight-year-old so please forgive the pink flamingos if you love pink flamingos this is one for you it's at target so what i have in this Binder is first you'll see my school calendar. I mark off the day in the morning that we are doing school. I really like this to just like have a visual of how often we've been doing school. Then this is probably my favorite thing in this binder, notebook, whatever these are called, is this record keeping calendar. So I have written down what we do for morning time every single day. And then I basically just check mark it once we're done so this is a really loose plan we don't get through all of it and i'm okay with that this is just for me to keep in mind and really know kind of what's tentatively coming up but again i could just like cross off whatever like we didn't get that done but i want to check mark what i especially did in the morning so i have morning time for me what my daughter leah has sienna lucy and then our read aloud that we do together which highly recommend a long walk to water. So I really love this. I just made it on Canva and it's been really nice for me to just kind of tentatively plan what we're gonna do for school and then check mark it as it comes. Okay, so I'll get back to what we do during morning time, but I'll keep moving through 
the notebook. So in this folder, I have papers for the girls that I don't want to get lost, just loose papers. First of all, I have a map for them for when we talk about saints and geography, just pull out the map and can point to the country. Right now it's just Europe in there. And then these I'll talk about later when I discuss more about what we're doing during morning time, but these are amazing and I keep them here. Again, it's just loose paper that I don't necessarily want lost, so I keep it in this binder that no one touches. The next thing I have is my Europe map so that I can know where the countries are because I don't actually know where anything is, so that's fun. Then I have some book lists in my binder, which is super helpful for me to just kind of have a baseline of what the girls could be reading. I love book lists a lot. Um, we also do gather on homeschool on Monday and Wednesdays. So I have all of their printed lessons here for me to just pull out and give to them because um, they don't actually have student binders. So I also have my The Good and the Beautiful lessons for me to dictate to my daughter. Um, so that is in here and I'll do a little curriculum overview in another vid. Two daughters do spelling UC, so I have those teacher guides in here so I don't have to get up and wonder where those teacher guides are. They're all just in my binder where I'm sitting. Okay, so that's my binder that I pull out every single morning before we start morning time to get a glance at what we got going on for the day. Then I pull out my very favorite Bible, which is the Jesus Storybook Bible. I love this Bible so much. If you don't have this Bible, I want to highly recommend you get it. It's so beautiful and gorgeous and makes me smile every time I read it. So the girls actually pick which Bible story we're going to read every single day and I'll just read it and hold it up and show them the pictures and it's incredible and starts really great conversations with us and it's just been a huge gift. Um, it is a Protestant Bible. I haven't quite seen anything that is not Catholic, but if there is something not Catholic in it, we would just discuss it right then and there. Not really wait till later, but be able to say, well, this is what the church believes and this is what we believe as Catholics. And not that we've really come across it in the Jesus Storybook Bible. I honestly just really highly recommend this Bible. It's beautiful. The storytelling is incredible. And that's really important to me that scripture comes alive for the kids and they really take it on for themselves and have some ownership over the beauty of the story of Jesus coming to save us. So the first thing we do is pray and then we read from the Jesus Storybook Bible. The next thing I do is take out one of these two books. So this is my little catechism by the Magnificat and Ignatius. This is Rise Up, Shining with Virtue, a virtue book for kids by Blessed Is She. It's amazing. It's linked down below. Both of these I'll link down below for sure. But we have been pulling out the catechism a bit more at this point to get a really beautiful and truthful understanding of the church. I love this catechism so much. It has a little brief description of what we believe in as Catholics. It tells you where that is in scripture. Super bonus for me. It succinctly says what we believe. Um, it invites you to put it into practice. So this is, do you know how to set the table for dinner? Would you know how to prepare the altar for mass? List what you need. This one is called What is Holy Thursday? So it's talking about the Last Supper and meals and that sort of thing. It invites you to do a prayer and then a little test yourself, which I always love. What did the Lord do during his last meal? What is the name of the apostle who betrayed his master? So I love this for, especially for these little activities at the end of each section. It's just been a huge gift to us to use this and it's just perfect for homeschooling. So I could not recommend this little catechism more. I've been looking at the Baltimore Catechism and would love to find resources for it, like either worksheets or questions. I know the Baltimore Catechism is already in question and answer format, so I'm looking at doing that once we're done with this little catechism, maybe once we're done with Rise Up as well. So love this catechism, can't recommend it enough. Okay, then we also turn to Rise Up especially if I'd like to work on a particular thing with the girls. Um, if I think someone's really struggling with patience, hey, let's talk about patience today and grow in patience and learn. Again, it's not just about knowing the facts or knowing what the church teaches, but how it actually applies to our everyday lives. So I highly recommend Rise Up by Blessed Is She 
obviously it's amazing the art is so fun i give it to the girls and they actually read the think about section um, they do the prayer and then we discuss what we read about in the think about section so it's just been really great sometimes it aligns up just right with the catechism or lines up just right with what we read in scripture which that's always a total god moment when everything lines up and it works out as part of our morning time i've been really wanting to teach the kids more about the saints and how i started is to just start with their names so each of the girls is named after a saint and has a middle name named after a saint so we've just been unpacking their saint patrons i cannot and this is like if you listen to nothing else in this video want to highly recommend you get this book stories of the saints it is told in the most beautiful storytelling captivating way the art is beautiful it's just an incredible book like so 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 good so while i read this to the girls and while i mostly do all of the reading that i just mentioned we use those coloring pages like I showed you before it's really like activity pages and this is just really amazing activity sheets printed from lazy liturgical which I will link down below I highly recommend you get the full package from her it is such a good deal to get the full package and always just have these they're in my Google Drive I can search for the saint and print out these activity pages this is color the flowers cut them out paste them on Mary's head to make a crown so this is for the maid crowning one of my daughter's middle names is after Mary so we'll be doing Mary for one of the days this one is so fun helps Saint Joseph care for the body of Jesus after the crucifixion so you would color cut out each element and paste it in the proper place on this page it's not just coloring pages but really beautiful activities this is write your needs on the slips of paper below because pilgrims write their needs on a note drop in a well once used by Saint Rose of Lima one of my daughter's middle names is Saint Rose so we will read about that saint in this book and while I'm reading and they're listening and we're talking about it, they're also doing these activity pages, which they have just really loved to do. Again, you guys can't recommend this enough. This is a library book and I'm for sure going to buy it because it's incredible. I could talk all day about this book, honestly, because I just love it. And it's been a really beautiful activity for them to do those sheets and me to read this and us to learn and again make all those connections talk about really loving the lord giving the lord your life in relation to scripture virtue the catechism and the saints all together the last thing we have added to our morning time which i'm super excited because i'm going to be giving one of these away to one of you so comment down below with which book you've been loving so far what books you have in your morning basket I would love to know um, and add more things what you've been loving if you use the Baltimore Catechism I'd love to know that but these are scripture verse cards so these I just started using last week for scripture memorization which I really had wanted to add to our homeschool morning time and what I did is I looked up what virtue we were going to be discussing in rise up and I found the verse that had to do with that virtue so this one is be strong and let your heart take courage all you who wait for the lord so then i found that scripture card in our rise up cards and here it is it's so cute with this tree i just love it so much and the girls just copied this so this was their scripture memorization for the week the invitation really is to continue the conversation about it especially when it's in regards to a virtue that we want to keep discussing so the first day they copied it i hung it on our fridge so that we would always see it occasionally throughout the week i'll ask okay what's our scripture memory verse and i try not to make it like okay we're on scripture memorization now but this is a part of our everyday lives talking about virtue talking about the lord is a part of our everyday lives so what was that scripture verse so this has been really great to just add to our homeschool and i'm really excited to ship one off to one of you guys this is from blessed is she they're so colorful so fun let me tell you the coolest part <laughs> is that they're actually postcards so kids could use these and send them off to family and friends and share about scripture um, to family and friends so these are actually postcards i'm just repurposing them and using them as scripture memory cards super super pumped about this again this is 
a little giveaway for you. So comment down below. Any and all comments um, will be part of the giveaway and I will end the giveaway on Friday and ship it out. Can't wait for one of you guys to get this. So those are really the main things we do during our morning time. Those are non-negotiables. We start with prayer every single day and we talk about the faith. And in that, we talk about geography. As I said, we talk about where all the saints are from. We talk about a lot about history, what was going on during that time with St. Catherine of Siena or with St. Clair of Assisi, etc. The other thing I've added while they're still doing activities, those activity sheets is this book called Everyday Graces, A Child's Book of Good Manners. And I've only done this a couple of times, but it's been a really sweet book to just have and the kids can passively just listen along as I read and we then discuss it afterward. So it's basically poems and stories that are adapted to talk specifically about manners. So this chapter is called Good Manners at Home. This was a really sweet story called Pansies and teaching the kids that they're one of a kind and um, they don't have to compare themselves to others, but their parents love them as they are and to continue to be cheerful and grateful for the way that God has made them. Then there's other stories. That story is longer. Here's another story. Again, this is all in the good manners at home section. Then they have poetry as well, which is always super fun. Another chapter is called Using Words Wisely, Out and About, Caring for the Elderly and Sick, um, Good Sportsmanship, that's pretty cool. Good Manners in School, that's great. So I've just kind of been picking here and there. Kindness towards animals, that's sweet. Good citizenship. Uh, so it's just been nice to have another thing to read to them during morning time as they're finishing, especially those activity sheets about the saints. Okay, then the very last thing that I do during a couple days of the week's story time is talk about our gather around homeschool read alouds. This couple of months, we're doing the artist unit study from gather around so i got a few picture books from the library which have been really great this I actually bought on amazon because one of my daughters was going to do a biography report on mozart which has fallen through the cracks due to chaos of our lives but the story is actually really sweet if you get this series i'm sure you'll really enjoy it there's really great pictures i love when there's actual pictures um, and art and then they have these cute little cartoon drawings that really broke up the story about uh, these real people and artists and composers. So this series I really liked a lot and it was just fun to read. Then these two I love so much. Again, they're just something for me to read aloud while my girls are finishing their activity sheets or starting to work on their handwriting, that sort of thing for me to uh, continue to read to them and be with them. This story is beautiful. They're both fiction. This is about Vincent van Gogh. The art is so beautiful. It's just really awesome story. I love it. Highly recommend this Vincent Can't Sleep book. And then the last one is Leonardo and the Flying Boy. Also highly recommend. Uh, the art is so sweet. The story is really excellent and really got us talking a lot about Leonardo da Vinci. We looked him up, looked up more of his inventions and things like that. So it's been a joy to read this to the girls again, as they're just doing their activity sheets or handwriting and to talk about these artists, to talk about saints, to talk about the Lord in our time together. It's just been such a gift to start our mornings off with these great books and um, come together and not just be productive and try to get through everything we need to get through, but really cherish this morning time together. Okay, so that concludes my morning basket. I realize that it's mostly just religion, but I'm realizing more and more in my own heart that that's what I want to teach my daughters is about the faith, is about the beauty and the truths and the theological depth of the Catholic Church the saints and their beautiful lives. Every day is so different. And I know for me, it can feel really discouraging to look at all of these morning basket videos and think, gosh, I'm not doing it like them and I'm not doing enough. And are my kids learning enough? But I need to keep reminding myself I'm doing what I feel called to do. I'm discerning 
every day, all day, Lord, where do you want us to go? And a big part of my confidence in homeschooling has been Gather Around Homeschool. If you're not familiar with Gather Around Homeschool, I really encourage you to click the link in the description to learn more about it. But it's been a gift to me. It's something I can rely on that I know my kids are getting all of those subjects met. Um, besides math, we do teaching textbooks, but all of those subjects are met with Gather Around Homeschool on those Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays that we do it. I don't want this to be a discouragement to you at all. I want to encourage you to do your own discerning. If this lights you up, if this gets you excited, to start doing a morning basket with your family, to start your day off with your family um, all around the table or all on the couches and reading together and being together and talking together. It's been such a cool shift just in my own heart of this not so much let's be as productive as possible and get all of your individual subjects done right now because I need you to get them done but to really cultivate this environment of being together of reading together of learning together because I realized I was a productive aholic and I'm breaking myself of that the Lord is breaking me of it <laughs> I'm really grateful for that so not just that we're being as productive as possible to get all our individual subjects done which can be done a lot faster than me spending any morning time with them and just doing their own Bible curriculum. And we love More Than Words. More Than Words has been a gift as a Bible curriculum, but I wasn't doing it with them. And this is so different to actually start off our day praying together, having time together, our hearts being at rest together, um, learning together. So it's a work in progress as everything is. But again, when I look at all these moms, I think you've got it all figured out. And I am a hot mess, guys, a hot mess. But the Lord is good and he's patient. My kids are patient and so grateful again for Gather on Homeschool for teaching us so much geography, history, art, all the things in Gather on Homeschool. Huge gift. I'll do another flip through another time. Or there's like tons of videos on it. Maybe I'll share some of my favorite flip throughs down below. But this is what we're doing right now. Could possibly change next week. Who knows? Who knows? The wind blows where it wills. You know? Thanks for hanging around. Leave a comment down below on if you guys do a morning basket, if this is an encouragement to you. Um, I really want to hear if you guys do it, what your favorite thing is about it. Not just that we're checking off boxes and becoming really good at being productive and getting all of these group subjects together done, but what life does it bring to your family? What does it do to your heart when you're gathering together for the morning basket or circle time or whatever you call it? Um, how does it light up your family and, and how does it glorify God in that way? So I'm excited to hear. Please share your comments below. Cannot wait to send you guys a little rise up scripture verse cards. You're going to love them. I know it. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.